Hello, so I'm going to talk about two broad subjects today. The first is a few of the random code generators that I've been using for testing both Clang and GCC. And then I'll talk about the way that I run these, the way that I use these to report bugs and how I deal with bugs before they've been fixed. But first, what do I mean by practical in the title? So this is roughly the aims of what I'm uh, using these fuzzers for. So I'd like to find high priority bugs where those are miscompilations being more important than crashes and something with a source code reproducer being more valuable and something with IR reproducer because they're not something real users could hit. Um, I try to prioritize targeting bug prone parts of the compiler. So we've found a number of bugs in calling conventions and stack layout in the past. So I've tried to prioritize those as well as new architectures, compiler features that might not have been well tested yet. And I try to often use differential testing, comparing Clang and GCC's behavior. So I avoid having to be implement the entire behavior that I'm testing. So the first sort of related pair of code generators I use are CSmith and YarpGen. These are open source tools, I think written by a team at the University of Utah. Both of them generate large, complicated C, um, C programs with lots of short circuit operators, embedded assignments, expressions that are about 10 screenfuls wide. These do a lot of complicated code and then at the end print out a checksum of um, all of the global variables that they modified. These are guaranteed to be free of undefined behavior. Unfortunately, they're not guaranteed to terminate, but most of the time they will, maybe 90%. Uh, the difference between these, CSmith tends to be better for more complicated branchy code. It does more of the embedded assignments inside expressions, short circuit operators, etc. And YarpGen came later and was designed to do more structured uh, loops that iterate over arrays, designed to trigger loop optimizations more to test them. So the typical way to use this is you generate one source file with it, compile link and execute it with two tool chains or possibly the same tool chain with different options. If the compiler or link crash, that's obviously a bug. If the execution times out or times out after a short timeout, you can't really tell anything useful because as I said, the program might not terminate. And then if either of those ones didn't print a checksum, it printed an assertion or a seg fault or something, that's a bug. If they ended up printing out checksums and they differ, again, that's a bug. Uh, another code generator I've been, one that I've been writing for quite a few years now is CC test. This is the one that's designed for testing calling conventions and ABIs. The idea here is it generates two source files and lots of function calls back and forth between them using complicated, unusual types. And then on the receiving side of that call, asserts that the values are all correct. Uh, it's, I won't read out that big list, but it's gained a lot of features over the years. Most of those are the sorts of types we want to test, including sort of um, architecture specific ones, and also features like returning from, well, instead of returning from a function normally, throw an exception or call a long jump. So the test flow for this looks a little bit different. It generates two source files. You compile them with two tool chains or again, the same compiler with different options, link them together, execute, the out execute that and check the output. Um, this time, if the program doesn't terminate, that is an error because all the programs are simple straight line code with no loops. Uh, there's an additional, additional error case there that it's possible to get linker errors caused by missing symbols or multiple definitions, which tend to point to something like C++ mangling, differing between the two compilers. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about some uh, how I run these. So one of the things I found to be very important is running these with lots of different compiler options. Um, when we add uh, new features to the compiler, it's not common to test it in combination with every other option because that's just intractable. But most of these options are binary on off options or a few values you can select. I um, have driver scripts that pick a random combination of these as long as it's valid, meaning these are getting a lot of testing now. Um, 
there's the difficulty, of course, that not all of these are compatible. So it has to take into account, say, some of these options only work on certain architectures. Um, there are also different levels of compatibility between these options. So some of them it's possible to change and link a program together and it's just fine. Some of them you change and you can't link the program and some of them you change and it changes implementation defined behavior completely. Things like endianness that matters for CSmith. So one slight downside of these tools is that when something fails, you end up with a thousand lines of really inscrutable C code. Um, so for link up compiler or linker crashes, those are easy. There's a tool called CReduce, made by the same team that did CSmith, that you give it a script, tells it whether this whether a source file triggers the bug, which is basically does it contain the error message if you run it through the compiler. Um, that is very good at reducing. Uh, Bugs down to a very small sample, easy to raise a ticket. It's also obvious which compiler is at fault. It's the one that crashed. Uh, Miscompilations are a bit harder. Um, you can use C reduce, but you have to be very careful with your interest in the script because it's very easy for it to reduce down to something that contains undefined behavior and therefore will print two different checksums. I have a script that works maybe 90% of the time by running the code through lots of sanitizers and static analysis. Sometimes you do just have to manually reduce it by deleting bits, being careful. And it's normally easier to decide at the end of this process which compiler is buggy because you've got a small sample. You can see what the expected behavior should be. Uh, CC test, again, it's hard to use C reduce, even harder again now because there's lots of architecture specific code like vector intrinsics. So mostly I reduce these by hand. Um, it's not quite as hard as CSmith because most failures are assertions that give you a file name line number. If not, you can quickly remove most of the code just by deleting calls and that removes half of the program at a time. Uh, so these fuzzers differ from a normal test suite as well in how you deal with failures that you've discovered but haven't yet fixed. So a normal test suite if a test fails, you can mark it as an expected failure, not run it until you've got a fix for it. But with fuzzers, you can't do that because if one randomly generated program triggered a bug, chances are there'll be another one. So there's a few different strategies for dealing with this. For crashes, again, it's easy. You can't know ahead of time whether or not to run something, but after it's crashed, you can look through the std error. Find strings, Clang and GCC are both very good at printing out stack traces, things with assertion messages, or at least function names that you can match on. Miscompilations are harder. Um, for CSmith, really the only thing you can do is not run the affected compiler option or combination of options. Luckily, often the bugs this find are if you turn on these three options at the same time, it causes the bug, so it's you're not losing too much testing until that bug's fixed. And for CC test, I also have added a lot of flags to the code generator to turn different types on and off other features like exceptions. So you can avoid generating the code that will trigger the bug when using particular compiler options. And uh, other options are you can match on a runtime error message, which can be less reliable if it's a miscompilation. It could cause basically anything to go wrong or match a pattern generated code, which I've used a few times when, if a compiler emits a instruction that is just always invalid, it's easy to match on that. And that's all I have time for today. Thank you.